My Mom Tries a Baker by Jacqueline Wilson. Chapter 8 I wasn't a bit tired myself, even though I'd been wide awake most of the night. For a while, I lay beside Mom, planning more things I was going to do with Alfie. Then, I got a bit peckish and went into the kitchen to scoop a handful of cornflakes out of the packet. That gave me a great idea. I'd make us breakfast in bed. I hadn't made mom breakfast in bed since the time I forgot about the toast and the smoke made the fire alarm go off. Luckily, when she got over the shock, she just thought it was funny. The time before that, I tripped carrying the tray and the orange juice went all over mom's cream rug. She didn't find that funny at all because the stain wouldn't come out. And when, and when I was really little, and not allowed to boil a kettle. I dr I dunked a tea bag in stone cold water, hoping that mom would drink it anyway. And she did, though it must have tasted revolting. This time I was going to make her a breakfast fit for a queen. I got out our best tray with the two cats on it. Watch out, I said. Better run fast when you see my dog Alfie coming. I haven't trained him yet. We had little blue cats on our nicest mugs too. I'm going to have to buy some dog mugs, I told them as I carefully poured boiling water onto the tea bags and added milk without a single splash. I spread the golden toast with butter and honey and poured a portion of cornflakes in two bowls, not adding milk till the last moment so they won't go soggy. We had orange juice in the fridge but I decided that might be too much for a risk. I made them made the tray look pretty by snipping a rose from St. Golfer's bunch and putting it in an egg cup. Then I carried the tray into mom's bedroom step by cautious step. Breakfast is served, your majesty, I said. You're expecting me to trip at the last minute and spill everything all over the bed, aren't you? But I didn't. I hung onto the tray until mom had sat up and then I put it carefully on her lap. Wow, Jess, you're a little star, she said. St. Colfer's is coming, isn't he? You did message him last night? Sin, and you know I did. And what's what if he's late like last Sunday? He won't be and stop fussing, but dogs and cats home doesn't even open until ten thirty today. I checked, said Mom. Come on, jump into bed with me and share this lovely breakfast. So we ate it together and then we had a cuddle. I had a sudden thought and sli slid down under the covers. Jess, what are you doing? Playing at being a bunny in a burrow? Remember that was one of your favorite games when you were really little, said so mom. She tried to pull me up, wasn't it? What is it? We'll never be able to call us like this when we live with St. Godfrey, I said. Of course we can have our cuddles. Most days, Sim gets up at some un 
you need see time like half five so he can go and train with a few others of sips. We'll have a couple of hours snoozy time cuddled up together, you and me, though maybe your Elfie will need to go out for a wee and the crack of down, said mom. He's going to be totally your responsibility. Okay? Absolutely, I said. Actually, how early do dogs need to get up then? We spent the next half hour looking up how to care for a rescued dog on mom's phone. Hmm, I'm not sure about all this wing and what have you. Since so house proud, he won't want his carpets messed up, said mom. I'm sure of his trade, he's not a little puppy. And if he's not, it's only take a couple of days of teaching to us to go out, I said. It took you much longer than a couple of days, said mom. And even if he is trained, he'll be feeling stressed. And that can have a dis disastrous effect of the bladder. You know Weedy Pepper Peter, the boy at the children's home with the same birthday as me? When we, when he first arrived there he was always wetting his bed. Did you ever wet the bed, Mom? I asked. No, I did not. Tricky, come on. You'd better have first best. Hey, we can have a bathroom each at since imagine Mom searched luxury. I can't believe we're actually going to be rich. You'll be able to have a beautiful bedroom like Alice and lovely clothes. And you can have all the lessons they have, like ballet and piano, and maybe we'll send you to their posh private school too. Wouldn't that be great, Jess? No more tall kids like Tony gagging up on you. I try to picture it. I'm usually very good at imagining, but somehow I couldn't manage it. Perhaps I already used up all my imaginative powers for the day thinking about Alfie. We still had hours to wait before we could set up for Patricia, but I was so impatient I could hardly sit still. After I got dressed, I paced round and round the flat, driving mom mad. Hey, nip down to the new agents, said mom, throwing at her fingers. I think Amor self snail bellish remover. My nails are all chipped, since very fuzzy about stuff like that. She gave me a note to put safely in my pocket, and I went down, down, down all the stairs. The lift was actually working, but at every twist of the stairs, I wanted to jump two steps for luck. At the very end, I did three steps, and very nearly wobbled over onto my knees, but I managed to save myself and then spread my arms strongly like a gymnast. What are you doing pretending to be Batman? Tony was longing against the wall, smoking a kicker. He was doing his very self consciously, making a great to do of holding it between two fingers, fingers and narrowing his eyes in supposed bliss as he inhaled. Then he coughed faintly, which followed the effect. 
What are you doing, pretending you're a smoker? I said. I looked at him closely. His short, his short hair was sticking out sideways where he spat on it. He was wearing a grubby T-shirt and turkey buttons, as I. As if he just got out of bed, maybe he had just got up because he had no socks on, and his trainers was unlaced. He wasn't wearing a jumper either, even though it was fresh morning. Do you want a puff? Said Tony, opening it to me. No thanks, I said. You can have your own bag if you like," he said, reaching into his pocket. "I don't like cigarettes," I told him, shaking my hand. "Where you going then, Amers? Getting chocolate and chips and stuff?" Tony asked hopefully. "Give me something, eh? I'm happy to share my bags with you. I don't want to share them. I'm getting my mom some there." Nail varnish remove remover. Do you fancy a swig of that? I said. Oh, haha! Very funny. T- Tony walked beside me, holding his cur- cigarette out. Obviously, what did your mom give you? A favor? You could buy a Kit Kat and a packet of crisps out of that. Cheese and onion, they're the best. Go on, get us some. I haven't had no breakfast. What are you doing, wasting money of Christmas? Then I said primly, I didn't buy them. I need them of my mom's boyfriend. Tony paused. I can't stick them. I can't stick him. I blinked at him. I can't stick my mom's boyfriend either," I said. "What? Don't talk rubbish. Your mom's going out with Sam Goldfried. I've seen him picking her up in his red Porsche SUV. I'd give anything for my mom to go out with Sam Goldfried. Not that he'd pick her. Your mom's quite a looker in a funny sort of way. Mine's rubbish," said. Tony. I was shocked to hear him speak out his own mother like that. I started to say say something polite about her in return, but I couldn't think of anything. We've just had a row," said Tony, "because I tricked my boyfriend. So he gave me a clip round the ear, and I said some more stuff, and Mom chucked me out out the flat." She chucked you out. I echoed. See if I care, especially I, as I got his facts," said Tony, struggling. I tried to imagine Saint Godfrey slapping me and Mom throwing me out of the flat. I was a bit ashamed for feeling so sorry for myself. It was far worse being Tony. We walked. To the shops in the middle of the estate, Amar was sitting on the floor, sorting out the Sunday papers. He grunted at us. He doesn't like children very much. Come and separate, he barked. He's got this new rule that children have to go in one at a time. So he can keep an eye on them. He says that otherwise one will distract him while the other needs something. He's probably right. You stay outside, I told Tony. He was bending down, clutching his sandwich. What's up? I asked. What's up? I asked. <clears throat> Hunger pains. He groaned. He was only messing about, but I sold him a Kit Kat and cheese. And onion crisps, all the same. I meant I could only buy the small size of nail brush remover, but I hope Mom wouldn't mind. Oh, you star," said Tony when I handed them to him outside the shop. He wolfed 
down the cribs in less than a minute and then snap the kick card in half to give me my share. Now it's okay, I've had proper breakfast, I said about it. You could come to ours and have some too. Cornflakes and toes and that isn't Colfrey there? Tony asked Ilgory. No, but he's coming soon. We're going to better see dogs and cats home to get my dog Alfie. I said proudly. You're getting a dog? You lucky thing. But they won't let you keep it. I got this dog well. I found him in the street and he didn't belong to no one. So I looked after him. At first he was frightened, but I was that gentle and then he really loved me. But some pig shot me and the consul told us we had to get rid of him. He went to better see. If you see a ten selfie there, he's my dog. And tell him it's not my fault, ah? said Tony. Tom- starting on his kitkat. What did you call him? I asked. I just called him Steffi. If you say it, he'll look up at you. He knew his name, said Tony. Can I really come for breakfast? Won't your mom be mad? Of course not, I said, though I wasn't at, at all sure. When Tony knocked me over, mom had been mega mad with him. He still the enemy in her books and once my mom thinks you're the enemy she goes on hating you no matter what she looked anxious when she saw Tony with me what are you doing here are you picking on dress again she said hands on her hips mom you know Tony is my maid Mate, now I said, can he come in for some breakfast? He says he's starving. I said, he's got a Kit Kat ring in his mouth. Said Mom, yes, but he hasn't had proper be- breakfast. I lowered my voice. His mom chucked him out because they had a row. I'm not surprised. If he was mine, I chucked him out too. But all the all the while mom was saying this, she was getting out of conference and again and putting the kettle on the board. Sit down here, kid, and stop wasting your money on junk food. Just bought it for me, said Tony, selling the last of his bar and getting started on a big bowl of conference. She did what? With my change? That'll come out on your pocket money, Jess Baker, said Mom, starting on her nails. The stuff gets on my nose, Tony complained. The said Mom, and don't eat those cornflakes dry like that. Pour some milk on. We don't bother with milk at home, said Tony, grabbing a handful of cornflakes. Looks like you don't bother with spoons either. Polish up your manners, kid. Isn't Godfrey really your boyfriend? Tony asked with his mouth full. Yup, said mom. And Jess really is getting a dog? Yup, mom said again. But we're not allowed to have dog on the Duke estate, said Tony. I told Jess I don't want her getting upset when she wants to give me her dog away like I did. Mom didn't look quite so first. Yes, but we're not staying here. We're moving. Where? Tony asked, looking alarmed. We're going to live in sin, Mom said proudly. Tony actually stopped eating. He stared. You lucky beggars, he said softly. You could come to tea when we're there if you want, I said, surprising myself. I hadn't even asked Alice to tea yet, and she was my best friend in all the world. I can't really, can I? said Tony, looking at Mom. We'll have to see, said Mom, starting to paint her nails silver. 
She is then called Freeman. Let me come. And is his house? Yeah, well, well, it will be mine too, said Mark and Jesses. And Alphys, I said, he'll want to, he'll want you to come because you like dogs. Then Godfrey seemed to like Tony too. This time he came five minutes early. He raised his eyebrows when he saw Tony talking into his second wall of conference. You didn't tell me you had a son too, Trace, he said. Oh, very funny, said Mom. So who are you then, lad? Just his boyfriend? No, I said immediately. Tony was pink and choked on his conference. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Coffrey, he said, leaping up and holding up his hand. In his haste, he nudged the milk jug and it went flying. Oh, for Pete's sake! Mom snapped, rushing for this close while Tony dived infectiously at the puddle with the him on his t-shirt. Let me do it, said Mom, elbowing him out of the way. It's gone all over the floor. I have to mop it all up or it smell. Don't bother about it, Tracy. You'll be out of this dump soon enough, said Godfrey. It's not a dump, I said, stifling. How dare he call it when we made it look like a little palace? No, it's, an, it, it's not, said Mom. She stood up straight, her hands itch around the desk cloth so that a little neck trickled onto the floor. Then Godfrey looked best. I've heard you call it a dog yourself, he prostrated. He just didn't get it. Mom could call it anything she wanted, but it was still ours. And she tried so hard to make a lovely home for us. She looked as if she was about to lose her temper big time. Sorry, ladies, said Godfrey quickly. He shook his head at Tony. See the trouble you've got me into? He was joking, but Tony took him seriously and bent his head in shame. It was so weird seeing him act like a dumb little kid when he usually seems so big and menacing. Cheer up, lad. Only kidding. Here, have you got a pawn? Do you want a selfie? Tony nodded. Please. While Tony was setting up his phone, Sim Godfrey went over to Mom. Sorry, darling, I didn't mind to hurt your feelings or the kids. You know me, I just don't think, he said softly. No, you don't, she said, still sounding angry. But when he had her a kiss on the cheek, she took a deep breath, finished mopping, ran out the Dish clothes and then went to get her jacket. It was the first time I'd seen her stop herself flying into a temper. Miss Oliver would have been ancient. Shit. I didn't know how I felt about it. I had I hated seeing Godfrey thinking that our lovely home was a dump. When it was actually nothing of the kind. We kept it so clean and neat, and the colors were lovely, and every chair and cushion and picture was carefully chosen. Every ornament and manito of a happy day blossoming in junk shops or ambling around boot fairs. Our flat might be very small and cramped compared with St. Godfrey's mansion, but I like it. I I like it much better. Still, we couldn't have dogs here, and I desperately wanted Alfie. I suppose my mom desperately wanted St. Godfrey. Crazy at that might seem. He wanted. He had to put up. 
with his same stupid things. He was actually being quite trustful with Tony. He asked him if he was into football, and they had a boring letter about matches and teams and scores. When we went downstairs, the four of us seen Garfield spotted this bunch of football in the gathers there playing f- footy. It was still quite early, so not a lot of people were up, but the kids looking about and the old lady setting up for church and the guy coming back from Amor's shop with a carton of milk and a Sunday paper all good in a while. Saint Godfrey showed off with a lot of fancy hood work which made the kids clap but then he stopped to show Tony how to do it. Tony was surprisingly good at catching on and did a passable uh, passable fake himself. Tony's pinkness had possibly none. He followed us to his flash red car and ran his hand lightly and loving over the creamy paintwork. Fantastic wheels, he murmured. Want to come for a spin? Sin Godfrey asked. What? What to better see? Then I could see my staffy, Tony cried. But suddenly his mom came laboring up. She still had her bedroom slippers on. And last night's mascara and smiled around her eyes. Oh, you! She shouted. I've been looking for you all over, you little tick. Wait till I get you back home. But, Mom, this is St. Godfrey, and he's giving me a ride in his car. St. Godfrey, Mom, you know the footballer, Tony gabbled. I don't care if it's David Blooming Beckham, you're not going off in any stage blocks car. But it's with just two, and her mom, Tracy Baker, said Tony. Yeah, well, Tracy Baker, said his mom, and she called him and started dragging him away. He, she said something very rude about oh, my mom. Thank goodness mom was getting into the car and didn't hear. She certainly wouldn't have been able to control her temple this time. Old, poor old Tony said simply free as we got into the car. Is he really good at football? I asked. Well, he's not bad, he said. He can come and join my junior squad if he likes. We do a general fitness workout and then football training. I'm strict with the kids. No point letting them mess out, wasting everybody's time. But they seem to have fun. The mother of his would never fork out for anything like that, said mom. Well, seeing as his dress, says Paul, I let him in for nothing. Oh, darling, that's so sweet of you. Isn't it just? You could come to just. It's for girls as well as boys, says St. Godfrey. No, thank you, I mumbled. I mean, it's not really my thing. I hated most games. I couldn't catch a ball or throw it actually. I wasn't great at run, running either. On sports day, I can last in the excellent ways. I wish there was a sport called reading a book. There where competition had to choose the best book in the library, find the cautious corner and read. There could be different catalogs. The spread where you just had to read a page. The 5,000 meters where you read a chapter. The 
thousand meters where you read to, and the math run where you read the whole book. I bet I win every race. Most of the children in my class didn't like reading at all. Miss Oliver once told us about a shame where children read to dogs to give them confidence. I wondered if she let me take Alfie to school. My tummy felt tight as I wondered whether Alfie was still curled up in his dog bed waiting for me. Perhaps some other family had come along and they decided it had be better off with them. I got more and more tense the nearer we got to Battersea. Sam Corfi was looking at me in his driving mirror. Are you feeling sad again, Jess? He asked, alarmed. Try to hold it in, not on the upper sea. She won't be sick. She's just feeling anxious, that's all, the mom. We nearly there, Jess. When I got out of the car, I felt a bit wobbly, but... I couldn't just stand still and take a few deep breaths. I set off at, re at such a pace I might have found myself winning a race after all. I was so out of breath when we got to Doc's home and I could hardly speak. We've come to see Alfie! I gasped to a girl in a blue better sea t-shirt. We hurried past all the dogs. I saw one brown Satterford bull terrier, so I paused to say hello safety to him. But he didn't even glance my way. Then we got to Elvis' kennel, and it was empty. It's gone, I cried. No, he's, an, he's not. He can't be. Look, it says reserved on his kennel. Perhaps he's tucked himself away in a corner somewhere, said Mom. He's not anywhere. Look, someone else has got him. Oh, I loved him so much. I am starting not to cry. Cheer up, Jess. There's hips. Of dogs to choose from," said Singorfrey. "What about this fully, fluffy little mud over here? Or does a German shepherd their great guard dogs? We don't actually need to get a dog from here at all. We can go to a breeder and get a proper pet eagle dog, any kind you like." I want a rescue dog, said Ma. We want, we want a rescue dog, said Ma. We want Alfie, I said, and the tears started dribbling down my cheeks. Cam said they reserved him for you. It says so on his nail. So what are they playing at, Mom demanded. They're not going to get away with this. If they've given Alfie to someone else, then the jolly will have to get him back. He's ours, isn't he, Jess? Yes, Mom. I snivelled. No need to get in such a state, Trace. You can go sorting your way around in here, said Sam Coffee. Watch me, said Mom, and she squared her small shoulders and marched back at the corridor. Sam Corfe and I had to hurry to keep up with her. He winked at me. Your mom can be very forceful at times, can she? He said. I didn't like him talking about Mom like that. For once, I was glad she was in a store. Maybe she really would get Alfie back for me. She barked her way so through to the front of the queens and respection desk. I'm not, I'm sorry, but this is an emergency, she explained with people object. My daughter was promised a safety dog, Alfie. He was reserved for my 
jazz, but he's not in his kennel. He's obviously been given to someone else, which is simply un unforgivable. Look at my little girl. It's broken her heart. You've you're going to have to track down Alfie because just saw him first. The better see lady smiled and mom briskly. It's okay. Of course we did we wouldn't give Alfie to anyone else. He's probably just gone for his walk with a member of staff. All the dogs are taken for a run. Look, I can see some coming back. Maybe your Alfie is one of them. He was. Another Battersea lady had him on a long blue lid. His head was up and he was starting, staring straight at me as I, if he really recognized me. Alfie, I called, scrolling down and holding my arms out wide. He came running towards me and then started licking my face, mopping up my tears for me. Oh, Jess, said mom. There now, I told you there was no need to be get upset, baby, said Singofrey. Aren't you going to apologize to the girl at the desk? Don't call me baby. And don't tell me what to do, mom hissed. Then she turned to the quay and the better lady and said, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have barked in and I shouldn't have yelled at you like that. But I was just so upset. My daughter has been wanting for a dog for years and now at last it's possible and she's just fallen in love with Elfie. You know what it's like. They seem to know what it was like because everyone was, was smiling. Now, we had to go to another room with another lady and fill in more forms. And mom and single free had to show some indignation. Though, of course, we already know who you are, Mr. Godfrey, said the third better sick lady. And all this time, she was holding Alfie's hand. Elf's lead, but he was licking my face and bouncing about and scrubbing at my legs, wanting my whole attention. He's telling you he wants to be your dog, said the lady. Well, I want to be his girl, I said. He's the best dog in the whole world. Do you know his history, mom asked. Why was he brought here? He looked like an like he was a nice nature, but does he ever get wound up or at risk? Like someone I know, said single free mother, chuckling. My sir him a look. I've got to be careful. I don't want just getting beaten, she said. I don't mind if Alfie has anger issues, I said quickly. I'll be I'll be very understanding. Elfie got a lovely temperament, said the better sea lady, assured us. We always get to know our dogs and make sure they go to the right homes. We wouldn't let the Igor's dog to go home to go a home with children. No, his former owner simply couldn't look after him anymore, so she brought him here for a rehoming. How could anyone not want to look after Alfie? I explained, hugging him. It happens just that mom, maybe she was thinking about Granny Collie not looking after her. Sorry, mom, I said softly. It's okay, sweetheart. Right. Say goodbye to all your better see friends, Alfie. You're coming with us, she said. I took Alfie lead and walked out with him. Hey, best dog in all the wo world. I said, you're really mine now. Alfie gave an excited bark as if he understood where every word. He pulled on his lid, offering me own words. Hill boy, I said. He took no notice and went bounding ahead, zigzagging his this way 
and that, winding his lead right around me. Then he started to do a wee, which made me giggle. That's it, Alfie. We wees outside, not indoors, said St. Godfrey. Don't worry, I'm sure he's probably trained it, Mom said quickly. Alfie seemed uncertain about getting into the car, so I had to lift him in and then keep him cuddled up on my lap. Then the car got going, to be going he started tem trembling. So I whispered to him, Sorny, it's all right, Alfie. You're safe with me. We're taking you to uh, your new home. Then I stopped. Where are we taking him? We're taking him to our new house, Emma. Change of plan. We're moving in with Sin straight away. The end.